All right. Um, logged into Roomly. I'm going to create a new plan, and I'm going to open it. First thing you want to do is check your settings because I think it's set for metric. So I click on settings, select it inches. I'm going to leave show dimensions and room sizes on for now. I can change default things for wall thicknesses, heights, all that. Looks good. I'll just save it. I'll go with the defaults. So how Roomly works is you double click to start a line. And you can't really input a number directly when it's stretching, but you can get pretty close. So if I wanted it to be 10 feet, I'll get close to 10 feet. And then let's say I want this to be 12 feet. I'm going to stretch it down until I get close to 12 feet. And you can see that it's all automatically going to want to line up with the last corner. So it can make room square. Click done. Now if I need to make adjustments on something, I, I can select a line. So I want to say this to be 9 feet 6 inches. I'm going to click the, the I button. And you want to make sure this is checked. You can see what it does is it actually keeps the room square. And you can adjust on which end it's going to be adjusting it from. I don't have any other rooms right now, so the default here is is fine. So instead of 9 feet 3, I want 9 feet 6. And I click OK, save. So now it's adjusted that 9 feet 6. Same thing with this. Select that line. And I'm just going to put 0 for, so it's 12 feet exactly. Now it shows 11, 12, don't worry about it. It'll actually refresh and show 12 feet. I don't know why it does that. Now the weird thing is I want to add additional lines. I'm going to select a line and then I'm going to click it and hold until it starts pulsing. Then I can add it in another line. So again, same sort of principle. I can go and say let's make this 16 feet. I'll get close. And I'll bring it down. Let's say this is 8 feet instead. And you can see I'm getting close to it. It doesn't really snap to 8 feet. But, but again, it'll snap to new perpendiculars. And there's my wall. Same thing if I need to do some minor adjustments. I can do that. If I want to start including things like doors, windows, I can select a line, and then I can select this icon over here. It'll take me to the catalog, and from there I can pick windows, doors, furniture, whatever I need. So I'm going to select an external door. Now it's got this move symbol with the four-way arrow, so I'm actually going to click and drag you'll see what it does is it'll actually allow me to put this door wherever I want. And I can snap, or I can drag it to show which way the door swing is going to be on what side. So I'm going to plunk it in there. And you can see it's showing me distances from the inside wall to the edge of the door. So you can get pretty close to what you want. Let it go. Let's put it in. I can grab more stuff from the catalog. There's a wide selection of doors, fair amount of windows, stairs. I'm going to close that. Now, while this is selected, I can. there's a mirror option. And, and if I click through it, you can see it'll toggle the way the sw door swings, my four different options. So I'll say that's good. There's my door. Now, if I wanted to add more doors, I don't actually have to go to the catalog. I can just select this door. Click copy, and it'll make another door that I can click and drag wherever I want it to be.
Now you can also notice that there's these little pull square bars that if I select it I can click and drag and change the width of the door that I'm using. And again, I might want to switch the direction for the door. Done. So Roomly is a pretty quick and easy way to add or to make a floor plan. 2D, nothing fancy. But it works out pretty well. I'm going to add a couple windows now. Again, there's different window styles. I'm just going to click and drag it into the room that I want. I'll close the catalog. Windows are pretty easy to, again, just say copy and I can duplicate it. And you can see it's going to if there's room on a wall, it'll try to put it right beside it. If there's not room on a wall to put it up beside it, it'll actually highlight it and show it over top the existing window, and you can just click and drag it. So again, I'm going to say copy. Now watch what happens. I'll say copy again. Oh, well this time it actually would let me do it. So that's a very quick way to add windows. There we go. I click copy. And I can specify where I want it, clicking and dragging. If I need to split a room, I can estimate where I need to put the split. I'm going to select it. Now I'm going to click it and hold down until it starts pulsing again. Click it again. Done. Again, once these things are put into place so it's fairly easy to make adjustments for a room. So again if this is not the, the right width for the room I can select it, go to information, say that this should really be four inches. Now this time I'm actually going to control where it's coming from. I'm going to say I want to adjust it from yeah, actually from this direction. I'm going to leave the outside edge where it is. And I want to make sure this is checked on so the room doesn't get pulled just on one side, but on both sides of the room so it's it remains square. So you can see what it's done. It's actually brought this up a little bit. I'll just click it to make it square again. Oh, I see. Actually, I did it the wrong way. Well, let's fix that up. Make it square again. Just like this. Four feet, four inches. Four feet, space. 4 inches. I'm actually going to select this one so it keeps the top corner square. It'll just adjust to the bottom part. And that's what I wanted. If you want, you can select just one edge to stretch and modify. So if you want to make a room that's more angled, you can. So I'm going to select this and I'm just going to drag it out. You can see what it's doing. If I do a mistake, and I don't like what I've done, there is an undo function right here. So I can select that. And it also shows you that you can use Control Z to undo that. Now when I'm ready to print it, um, I'm going to go back into settings and I'm going to turn off the dimensions and showroom size. Yeah, you can leave it on if you like. But I'm just going to show you there's a very simplified floor plan. It does have a text function in here, so I can add text information. So if I just want to put, you know, that it was 12 feet by, well, I think this was more like 16 feet. Sixteen feet by eight feet. I can. Just click outside the box and it's done.
But you see the text is a little bit small, and I haven't discovered a way to um, adjust the size. So that's why I'm making all of this blank. I'll save it up to a file, and then I'll just add some text in PowerPoint or something else. So I'm ready with my floor plan. I'll click the Share button. Now I can actually input this into a web page, or I can print it directly. I'm going to select Export, which will help me create a file. It's processing the image. And my suggestion is, before you export, is to just zoom in so this maximizes the viewport, or the display area, because that's what's actually going to get saved into the image. There's no options to change resolution, but that's fine. Usually for uh, it's been pretty decent quality just for capturing what's on screen. So once it's done processing, then you click Save Image, and you can save your JPEG file anywhere. So it's calling it Image. I'll call it Floor Plan. Zero 01. Save the file. And now you have a JPEG that you can work with. Like I said, for more of the text and information I I inserted the JPEG into PowerPoint and I just used PowerPoint to add uh, text information and then that could be saved out or made into a PDF file. And that's it.